Hey Luke here with CatsAndCarp.com. Me and my boy Tommy here. We're catching, cleaning, and cooking trout. All right, buddy, you ready to go fishing? Yeah. Now we're gonna go out to West Virginia and catch some trout, huh? Yeah, that's super far away by our house. <laughs> Tommy and I headed up to Mountain Meadow Farms in Sure, West Virginia. I'll put a link in the description to see more about this location. Tommy was super excited. He loves catching trout. And so I've got this little ultralight set up for him. It's a 13 foot ultralight. You can use it like a cane pole because it's so long, but it's super light and easy for him to handle. And I've got a number eight hook, little eagle claw under uh, a bobber with a piece of worm. No split shot, nothing else, super basic. Oh! Uh -huh. <laughs> you got it, Tom. All right, there's Tommy's trout. Yeah. Put it in the ice. Okay, put it in the ice. Well, they keep attacking our orange bobber, so I think we might try some of this orange power bait. Well, that power bait's not doing diddly squat. Let's go back to earthworms. Yeah, let's switch to spots. All right, Tom, let's go to the other pond. Yeah. You don't need to get a fire away. The fish, look how close they are. Oh, see, there's another one. You got, you got a bite. You got one. You got one. Whoa! Whoa! You got that. We got it. Right now. He's trying to eat my finger. He's trying to eat your finger? Well, Tommy, there you go. You caught some trout. Yeah. Look at the camera. You... All right, Tom, you want to put him in the bucket? Go ahead and put him in the bucket. Good job, buddy. That's number two. Nice big piece of worm like that seems to be working good with these more aggressive fish. Usually I, I go for a smaller piece, but. Um, this large piece seems to be working really well. These little pay to fish private ponds are great for taking kids to fish. Tommy loves this because he can do it on his own and he would rather catch these little trout than 30 pound catfish because he gets to do it on his own. It's just so much fun for him. You look like a serious trout fisherman there. You've got trout blood all over your face. Tommy went bonkers when he discovered you could catch newts in the pond. I think that was as exciting or more exciting than the fish. Oh, this is cool. We never had these in Alaska. Here, let's let them go. Watch this. So you take this snail. Tom, put and break it into pieces? Snails are an awesome underutilized bait. We're great for catfish, carp, trout, whatever. And if you're in a pond like this one that's full of them, Give it a go. The snails here work better than earthworms or the power bait. Tom, you got him? Yeah! yeah. Woo! Good net job, Tom. You're great with that net. Yeah, he, he chomped down on that snail. Yeah, look at that snail. That is the first trout I have caught in a long time. I forgot how much I love catching these guys. Look! Oh. You catch one? Yeah! Hey, come up and show the camera. Show it to the camera. Okay, hold it still. Hold it still. Wow! That's how you catch a center. I think you got one, Tom. You got one. You got one. Oh. Reel them in. Get that rod up, get the rod tip, put the rod way up in the eye. Ooh, that's a big one, Tommy. Super higher, Daddy. Ooh, that is quite the bucket of fish.
All right, we have enough fish. I think it's time to quit, Tom. We had a blast doing this. We had the place to ourselves on a Saturday morning. We got to feed the fish. We got to catch newts. We caught a bucket of trout. And Tommy learned a lot about fishing. He got better at casting and fighting the fish. And it was just a chance for us to have a great time as father and son in a beautiful location. And I'm really glad we went. Ho, ho, Tom, come look at our fish. Now, that is what I call a mess of trout. Look at that. Okay, so let me show you how I clean a trout. I simply cut the fish behind the gill plate and then turn the blade 90 degrees and work the blade along the spine from the top of the back to the middle of the belly all the way down across the fillet. And then I come back afterwards and trim off any fins that are attached and take the tip of the blade and shave off the ribs that are uh, attached to the fillet. It salvages a lot of meat. It's simple. It's the technique I know. But if you want to see how an expert does it, check this out the one of the owners of mount meadow farms came and started filleting the, my fish for me and i pulled out my video camera so so what i do when i fillet a trout uh, i'll show everybody when i'm teaching them that here's the gill plate and it's a real hard bony like structure and if you look this is meat from here all the way up into right behind the head here so you don't want to waste that make an initial cut same angle as the gill plate down to the backbone on the back side down to this color line where you can see where the line, the color changes down towards the belly of the trout. So then what you're going to do is put your knife in to the cut. The back's going to go first and the belly always trails behind at an angle. This part of my knife that I'm touching is going to ride right on that color line right there. And as I bring it back, as long as the knife makes contact with that color line, and the back is down here next to the fin on the backbone. It's going to get the meat and miss the rib bones. When I get to this fin, I'm going to straighten my knife out because there's no bones from here back. And then just ride the backbone with your knife all the way back to the tail. And we're going to cut it off. The only thing in this fillet that needs to, that needs to be cleaned out right now is the little anal tag right here where the anus is. So just take a little pop right there and your fish is clean good to go and you can see it's a lot neater you have no bloody mess and so. do you take the pen bones out on the really big ones no i usually don't i i usually just i take them out after i cook if you get one that's about 16 inches mm -hmm. the rib bones or the pen bones are right here and mm -hmm. you can feel them you know yeah, yeah and on the big one you take a, your knife and go right alongside of them and make a v you cut all the way down to the skin on that side and all the way down to the skin on this okay. side. Just a teeny tiny narrow strip. And then okay. cut across it. Hook it in the, okay. take your finger and go from here down to there and the meat just strips out that's got the pin bones in it. Now see right here how these fillets are kind of got a little yellow kind of whitish tint to it. That's nice. That's natural for a trout. A lot of people expect them to look like wild salmon fillets and you only get that from eating in the uh, ocean. Some, uh, some farmers add dye to the, to the fish food to make them look uh, orangey just because people expect it to be orange. But this is what a real healthy, natural trout fillet should look like. I think the most fish I ever did in a day was like 754. <laughs> that was in an eight hour day. It was Memorial weekend. And uh, we had both ponds ringed with people fishing. Well, I like this uh, this Cabela's fillet knife. Man. It, it is a really good knife, and it's not an overly expensive knife. No, no, nice. Uh, we've had two of those. They've filleted a lot of fish. It's not a hollow ground blade, so and I use the Cabela's sharpener with it to touch them up after each use. Most of the time, you'll do a quick pass through this if you've got a bad spot in the blade, and then run over to your stopping blade and run several swipes through it, and you're right back to shaving hair off your arm. Yeah. So. I grew up in Alaska and ate a lot of trout and salmon and halibut in my life. Um, and everybody has their own recipe and way of cooking them. This is the best. This is the simplest. This is my favorite. Okay. Really easy. And I've seen a whole lot fancier recipes and I like this a lot better. Take one part melted butter, one part brown sugar, mix it up. Okay. Super easy. Then take some tin foil and either lay it down onto a barbecue grill or onto a, a baking pan. Okay, and it's raining cats and dogs, so I did this in the oven rather than the barbecue. But well, however you're doing it, 
lay the tin foil down, put the fillets top side up, uh, dry them off so they're not wet, and then just smear on this butter and brown sugar mixture on there and be as liberal or as light as you want. If you're doing it in an oven, hit it to about 450 degrees for about six minutes. That's all you need. And if you're uh, on a barbecue, you want about a medium heat, same amount of time. Just uh, go and pay, base that stuff on there, get all that little syrup and caramelized sugar on there. The skin sticks to the tin foil, the meat comes off really cleanly. Easiest way in the world to cook fish, super delicious. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to make smoked trout. This is a really easy, wonderful recipe. Okay, take a bottle of soy sauce, plain old soy sauce, put it in a saucepan. Then take five, six hearty chunks of fresh ginger and uh, toss it in there as you bring it up to a boil. Then you're going to add about half a dozen cloves of garlic. Doesn't need to be precise. I eyeball it every time. And about, oh, a cup of sugar. For a bottle of soy sauce this size and what i'm doing is i'm making a homemade teriyaki sauce and this is going to be the brine that cures the meat before i smoke it and taste it see how it is if it's a little too tart add some water and uh, bring it up to a boil and once it's boiling for a few minutes that's it you're done cool it off just let that sucker sit you want the sauce to be completely cool before you pour it on the meat because you don't want it to cook the meat. But uh, pour it into a bowl, let it sit for a, a few hours, or you can do it like what I'm doing and dump the whole mixture into a Ziploc bag and throw it in the, uh, the refrigerator for a couple days till you can get to it. Um, I think I let this sit for a day and a half before I had a chance to get the smoker out. But uh, this is the part that actually cures the meat, that salty teriyaki brine is what cures it and then just drying it out helps preserve it. Um, you're not cooking it in a smoker. You're simply adding flavor and drying it out. That's it. So I've got my file cabinet smoker which I made several years ago. I've gotten a lot of use out of and I've got some chicken wire here just to keep it off the bottom. And this is why I keep the skin and scales on the fillets because that chicken wire is nasty. You don't want to be eating food that's been on that. So put it skin side down and you're not eating the skin anyway. So you can smoke, smoke fish on that. It doesn't have to be all, all clean. But I sat there and smoked it with some hickory chips um, for uh, eight, ten hours, I think. And it, because they're such thin fillets, they, they uh, cured up very quickly. Oh, just wonderful flavor and smell of these suckers but uh next day before i went to work had uh, about a kilo of of uh smoked trout to pass around the office so oh, uh, beautiful delicious uh food and it lasts a long time in your refrigerator or freezer all right some smoked fish you like that yeah me too you like smoked fish tommy yeah well, if you like that video, check out some of our other great videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel. We put out new videos every Saturday and Wednesday morning. And don't forget to... Whoa!